of 1988. You've already had two really good baseball games for the NES. That is baseball done by Nintendo and RBI baseball done by Tangan. But now a new challenger enters the fray. Enter LJN. Yes, that LJN. They brought with them a special weapon. That's right, the MLB license. So, with all that said, let's dig into this little baby. Major League Baseball by LJN. Major League Baseball was released on the NES in April of 1988, a couple of months after RBI Baseball and a few months before bases loaded. The game was published by LJN and developed by a little known company in Apple. Wait a minute, Atlas? Okay, Atlas is one of my favorite video game companies. They've produced such great stuff like the Shin Megami Tensei series and one of my favorite guilty pleasures on the NES, Rockin' Cats. So with Atlas behind this, this game should be good. I mean, I hope it's good. The main selling point of this game is the MLB license. So instead of playing a generic team for Baltimore, you get to actually play as the Baltimore Orioles which is cool in its own right, but most of the casuals would love just to play as Cal Ripken or Roger Clemens or other superstars in the late 80s. Another good thing about this game is how deep the statistical analysis is. You can build a team with a bunch of good stats and prepare for the best, or to have lots of fun, you can make your entire team a bunch of pathetic losers, trying their best to hope for the win. Which is just like the Atlanta Braves or the Minnesota Twins or, I don't know, some other teams. Not to mention, the music during the options menu is great too, and I kinda jam to this. So we have good music in the menus and a lot of ways to create your team. This is shaping up to be one of the best baseball games on the NES. Now just to start the game and... Oh... Right. Like most LJN games, you actually have to play the game and become hugely disappointed with the outcome. First things first, the sound of the game is absolutely atrocious. I'm assuming this is supposed to be crowd noise, but instead it's nothing more than white noise, and it plays incessantly throughout the entire game, only to be broken up with some lame 8-bit organ music variations of Take Me Out to the Ball Game and CHARGE! It's annoying and will get on your nerves quick. So you want to play this game on mute, but that's only the third biggest problem with the game. The second biggest problem with the game is how stuttered the game is. Let me explain. Once you hit the ball with the sound of you hitting the ball with a wiffle ball bat, the game stops for a few seconds to load up the field. This is a problem. NES baseball was seamless. RBI baseball just blinked and went to the long shot. MLB halts on this ugly green screen before loading the field. It goes back to the ugly green screen to load the pitching screen after the play on the field is completed. It becomes completely disjointed and not fun whatsoever. The stops and starts last so long, and with games doing it better in previous outings, this is really unforgivable. But the biggest sin that this game has is the way the actual physics of the game work. When you play a baseball game, you expect the actual baseball to travel like an actual baseball being hit. In MLB, you hit the ball and will just stop after taking three bounces instead of continuing to move via its momentum like any game would do. This kills any momentum within the game whatsoever, makes infield base hits impossible, it turns doubles or triples into singles, and overall kills the game. Not only is it against Newton's first law of motion, where an object in motion tends to stay in motion, but it makes the game immediately worse than any baseball game that was out there at this time. At least all of the baseball games that were released at the time managed to follow this basic law of physics. This game doesn't. All three of the above comments quickly nullify any good that the game had in the beginning. If the game is enjoyable to play, then nobody cares about how deep the stats go in the game, or how good the music is in the menu screens. This is just simply an unenjoyable baseball game. I could blame Atlas for this, but they were just the underlings of LJN for this project. LJN needed to have this game be tested a few more times before actually releasing the game and fixed all the bugs. Instead, they rushed it out and cashed in on the MLB name, just like they did with Karate Kid, Roger Rabbit, the Marvel games, the NFL license, among countless others. I'll be perfectly honest, I was outright bored and almost falling asleep while trying to record footage for this game. 
I mean, I just don't understand how you can mess up a baseball game. But then again, I should have expected this because it's LJN. But let's be honest, things can always get worse. Much, much worse. But that's another story for another day. Next time around, we'll take a look at Jellico's effort in Bases Loaded. Is it better than this game? Well, yeah, but by how much? You'll have to wait and see. Until next time, bar boy!